point three. Um, we're going to start with finding area of kites or rhombuses. There is an equation for this. The equation area of a rhombus or kite. It does have an equation. However, this equation actually isn't on the reference sheet at all. So I'm hoping by teaching you the concept, you'll be able to remember what to do. Okay, so the equation is area equals D1 times D2, diagonal one times diagonal two, divided by two. So D equals diagonal. And so let me make this equation kind of make sense so that way you'll remember what to do. So number two, we see a kite. Um, and in this kite, you can see that there is actually four triangles. And if you wanted to find the area of each triangle individually, you could. You could just do base times height, divide by two, and find the area of each triangle. Or you can kind of shortcut it using this equation and say, okay, diagonal one times diagonal two divided by two, and you're finding the area of all those triangles at the same time. So two plus 10, two plus, two plus, well, let me get the, two plus 10 equals 12 there, and then six plus six equals 12. So 12 times 12 divided by two is 144 divided by two. So the area here is 72 units squared. So from there, we're actually going to go to number three. Number three is set up very similar. And again, just practicing that same process, it's going to be diagonal one times diagonal two. So five plus five is 10. Seven plus seven is 14. So 10 times 14 divided by two, 140 divided by two. The area equals 70 units squared. You could find the area of each individual triangle individually. If you forgot this equation, you could definitely do that to get the correct answer. This is just a little shortcut. So being that that shortcut works, if you were to find the area of the entire kite, again, just diagonal one times diagonal two, divided by two, and you'll get the answer. So 38 times 19 divided by two is 722 over two. And this comes out to 361 units squared. Okay, and then number four, same idea. It just takes it one more step. Um, it shows that this diagonal is six units, but it doesn't show the length of this one. So we're actually going to solve for it. So if this whole thing is six, then this right here is three. This would be a 90 degree angle. So this would be a right triangle and then we can use Pythagorean theorem to find this length. So three squared plus B squared equals five squared. So we get, this is four. So that means this is four. So this diagonal right here is eight. So then we can do six times eight divided by two. Area equals 24 units squared. Okay, um, now this part brings in some vocabulary. Some of it we know, some of it we don't. It says identify the center of the polygon JKLMN. It's talking about this pentagon here. The center is right here. Looks like it's at point P. Then it says, identify the central angle of the polygon. Well, a central angle goes from the center to a corner and then center to the next corner. And this would be the central angle right here. This would be angle NPM. Okay, next it wants the radius of the polygon. Radius goes from center to corner. So center to one of the corners. We can see that PM is a radius. There might be other radiuses, but PM is five units. 
And then this is a new word, the word apothem. What apothem is, it's the distance from the center to the side. So center to the side of the polygon. And in this case, it is right here, PQ is the apothem, and it's 4.05 units. So all of this seems like simple individually, and it's building toward what we're doing on the next page. So here it says find the measure of a central angle of a regular polygon with a given number of sides. So to find the central angle, all you have to do is take 360 degrees, which would be like all the way around the polygon, and divide by the number of sides. So this would be 36. This would be 15 degrees. Okay, so at the top here it says find the given angle measure of regular octagon A B to H. Okay, octagon has eight sides, eight sides. Regular means that all the sides are the same measure and the same length and all the angles are the same. So we can use that to help us. Then it says measure of G J H. Okay, let's look at what they're talking about. G J H this angle right here. Okay, so it looks like it's a central angle. It just goes from one point to the next. It's like one section. Um, it's an octagon, so there's gonna be eight of these. So we can do 360 divided by eight to get the measure of 45 degrees. I should have kept it in the same color so it matches. Okay, so the teal one is 45 degrees. Okay, then it asks for the measure of GJK. GJK is right here. See how there's an apothem drawn right in the middle there? So it would be like bisecting that angle. So we can do 45 degrees divided by two to get that part. Okay, next, K, G, J. K, G, J would be this angle right here. Okay, so this is where it's kind of tricky because it becomes so small. I'm gonna draw that right triangle there that we have. And we found that this angle is 22.5 degrees and this is a right angle, so this is 90 degrees. So to find this part right here, um, we would just do 180 minus these two numbers to find that little angle. So 180 minus 90 minus 22.5 equals 67.5 degrees. And then number 16, EJH. That's random. Okay, so it's like this angle over here. And this is one to three sections of the octagon. So we can just do three times 45 degrees and get that angle. So we 135 degrees. We'll be able to do this. Okay, so find the area of the regular polygon. There is an equation for area of a regular polygon. It is right here on the reference sheet. Regular polygon equals this equation right here. Um, these letters, P stands for perimeter and A stands for apothem. So we're going to write that down. Area of regular polygon is one half P times apothem. And this only works for regular polygons only when all the sides are the same measure. Okay, so to solve this equation, we need to have these values. We need to have the perimeter and the apothem. In this first example, they gave us the length of the apothem, which is nice, and the apothem is just the distance from the center to the side. Perimeter, they show just one side, but they say it's a regular polygon, so that means all the sides are the same measure. It's an equilateral triangle. Now from here, we do need perimeter, so 12 
plus 12 plus 12 is 36, and then we'll just use this in the equation. And then the apothem is 2 squared of 3. And then we solve. Um, you can plug it into the calculator right away, or half of 36 is 18, and then multiply that by 2 squared of 3. Um, plug it in the calculator, and you would get 62.35 units squared. Okay, number 18 right here. Make sure I'm getting the right numbers when I do it. Okay, so 18, we have a radius right here. Um, it shows that one of the sides is 6.84. We're told that it's a regular polygon. The equation is area equals one half perimeter times the apothem. Thing is, we don't have an apothem. Um, perimeter, we could multiply this number by the number of sides, so that's cool. Let's see how many sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sides. So we can take 6.84, multiply it by 9 to get the perimeter. Yeah. Perimeter is 61.56. Okay, so I have that I can plug into the equation, but I need a pothem. So um, we're going to draw right triangles in here. So. This section right here is this triangle, and then we're going to split that in half to make a right triangle. Okay, so this black triangle is the one we're going to use to solve for the apothem. Now the 6.84 refers to that entire side, but we can divide that by 2 to get just that part. So 6.84 divided by 2 is 3.42. So looking at just this triangle right here, the dimensions, I have 3.42 right here, I have 10 right here, and I need to solve for the apothem, which is x. So I can use Pythagorean theorem here. I do 3.42 squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. x squared equals 88.3036, square root of that, x equals 9.396, <laughs> and there's more decimals, but yeah. So that's cool. Um, that's the apothem. That's the length of this right here, and then we can use that in the equation. So I'm going to move up here. Area equals 1 half. Perimeter we solved to be 61.56. And then multiply by the apothem, which is 9.397, we'll call it. And then the most satisfying thing is when you get a question like this right, and you do all this calculating, and then you check the answer key, and it's there. <laughs> about two and we're good Teen, go to number 20 you can do it number 20 um, number 20 all they give you is one side of a regular polygon and you have to figure out the rest that's cool okay um, Using the equation, area equals one half perimeter times the apothem. Perimeter here would be seven times six, seven units times six sides, so the perimeter is 42. So we have that we can plug in the equation. And then as far as the apothem goes, we have to figure it out. 
So the apothem would be right here. So how the heck are we going to figure out what that length is? We're going to use the triangles. So I'm going to draw a right triangle right here. Okay, cool. Um, how do I figure out the angle of that triangle? Well, I know I can figure out the central angle, and then I'm going to divide that by 2 to get that smaller angle. So the central angle would be 360 divided by 6, which is 60. So that whole thing is 60. And then this little angle right here is 30. Also, 7 refers to the whole side, not just this little part. So at this point, there's two different ways you could figure out this length. Remember the special right triangle, 30, 60, 90? You could use that to figure out this side. And the reference sheet actually has the 30, 60, 90 triangle right here. And it says it's from short to the medium side. It's times square to 3. So 3.5 times square to 3 is that length right there. So that's your apothem. So area equals 1 half, perimeter 42, and 3.5 square to 3. So 42, 3.5 times square root of 3 times 42. Divide by 2. I got it. I got it. 127.31. Okay. But what if... It isn't a 30 degree angle. What if it isn't a special right triangle? How would we solve it for that side? We'd use trig. Let's try it. <laughs> we're getting smart, smart. I feel like this is like one of those like really hard workouts. Okay, um, last one we're doing together. And this one's straight from the question bank of the homework. Maybe you'll get it on there. Let's see. So what if we have a nonagon? Where did I write it down? Okay, we're not doing this. A nonagon. A regular nonagon with a perimeter of 126. I don't even know how to draw a nonagon. I'm trying my best here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I tried. Okay, here's a nonagon. The perimeter is 126. Cool, because area equals one half perimeter times the apothem, um, I need to figure out what the apothem is. So I drew a central angle. This is the apothem right here, right triangle. Um, 126 all the way around. 126 divided by 9 would be 14. So 126 divided by 9 equals 14. Um, but then I need to divide that by 2 again to get just this part. OK, so that's 7. Okay, I'm trying to solve for this. I need this angle right here. So I can do 360 divided by 9 to get that angle. That's 40. That's the central angle. But then I divide that by 2 to get this little angle right here, 20 degrees. Okay, so now I have this angle, and I can solve for this using trig. So Sokotoa is what I'm going for. Opposite and adjacent. So we're going to use tan. Tan of 20 degrees equals 7 over x. We're getting there. Then multiply both sides by x. Divide both sides by tan, and x equals this, which comes out to 19.23. That's the apothem.
Okay, so that's our x, our apothem right here. Now that we have that, we can solve for area. So area equals one half perimeter was 126, and the apothem is 19.23. Multiply these three. And you get 1211.49. And now we are the smartest kids in school. So that's cool. That's fun. Um, okay, so you have the rest of class. We actually have 36 minutes. So you have plenty of time to do your homework. If you have questions on this, let me know. If we need to like group think on the board, let me know. And yeah.